um, in my last video I was quickly telling you about my busted arm torn bicep it's immobilized can't move it I can move my hand a little bit so that will help but um with this limited capability I'm going to show you today how to install power folding tow mirrors this is a 2500 ram 2016 model I think it's the first year they actually came out with power folding tow mirrors but apparently you can put these power folding ones these are aftermarket from 1a auto you can put these on any ram provided that you have power folding regular sport mirrors so as long as you match the same options these are power folding these are heated they're power adjusting all that stuff they have the puddle lights turn signals in them you have to buy the exact same features for these so these have the puddle lights the turn signals the power adjustment power folding they're exactly so they're plug and play I will put um, product numbers to all this stuff in the description below when I was doing my research there's only a couple of videos on YouTube showing the installation of tow mirrors uh, none of them were power folding from what I can recall and none of them used the support brackets I on the other hand am going to use the Mopar support brackets the Mopar riv nuts and screws uh, this can all be done with your basic hand tools socket set bit of Loctite flashlight that kind of stuff you will need a riv nut tool and if you know nothing about riv nuts or how they work I will put a link to a video from somebody else in the description below and you can use that to help you rather than me trying to explain it all now and other than that uh, there's the Mopar riv nuts the Mopar screws you don't have to get the Mopar stuff you can you know find that at most nut and bolt stores now I know there's a ton of guys out there and I know a bunch of them will probably comment on this video that you don't need these. Tons of people install the tow mirrors without using them. But from the factory Mopar puts these on the truck and it's you know for a reason it's not going to hurt. It's extra support. I will tell you the mirrors themselves are twice the difference in weight. And I've read a lot of guys in the forums who put these on and without the support brackets and they say they're totally fine and that's good you know if it works perfect but there are people that experience vibrations in them at higher speeds and at the end of the day if it was meant to come with that that's what I'm gonna do you choose how you're gonna install it that's fine let's get into the install we're gonna take this door panel off I'm gonna show you how to do that and I'm not sponsored by the way I want to say that from 1A Auto I was very kind of skeptical about these mirrors but Man, the fit and finish on these things is just as good as OEM, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> you have to hold them in your hands. They're very heavy. They're f the plastic, everything on the outside feels like OEM quality. So, I'm very happy with them. And they work good. I will show you that at the end of the video. And we're going to go dive right in. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove this access cover. Now I just stuck a, a flathead screwdriver in behind here and it's rubber here so it didn't hurt the paint and I just got it started because obviously I have one hand <laughs> but then you just grab hold and that trim piece just pops right off and that's basically you can see the three screws there now one two three that's what holds the mirror on itself We'll come back to that later. This is the electrical wire that controls everything. And uh, next we need to get this door panel off. Okay, next you're gonna find six of these plastic retaining clips around the perimeter of the door. I'm just gonna show you one because obviously repeat this six times. Um, they are a T20 Torx. Some guys I know just pull them out with a screwdriver or whatever, but if you wanna do it the proper way without breaking it, T20 Torx. Get that out. Once you get it out so far, uh, they should just pull right out. So you'll get this part, and then you're left with the retaining clip. And that is just a matter of a flathead screwdriver. Kind of pry it out. 
and you get this portion. And that's it. So I'll go ahead and repeat that six times and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, next you're gonna have a little piece of plastic behind the door handle here that covers one Phillips head screw. So if you have one of those plastic panel poppers or I don't know, you can use a bunch of different things. Use your imagination. Obviously screwdrivers, knives, things like that could risk scratching something. So if you're really particular, use something plastic or something gentle. Uh, and I already have mine moved, removed prior for ease of video because I am one handed today. But yeah, once you get in behind it, you can pop this piece off, just snaps in and out and you'll see that one Phillips head screw. We will go ahead and remove that now. And I'm tackling this job one handed today. So surely if a guy like me can do this one handed, you guys should not be afraid to attempt. Or most of you should not be afraid to attempt. Sometimes you even get lucky like that, hey? And the screw falls somewhere where you can actually find it. Okay, a little bit ahead of myself. You have to remove this plastic piece next. And I did not remove this prior. It actually comes off this easy. Just pull on that end, open your door up, your door handle, and let's see if I can get this out of the way to show you. There you go, just slips right off. There is a wire attached, you can disconnect it if you want, or you can leave it hanging, it makes not a huge difference. I usually just leave it like this, and I'll slide it back through the hole once I get the door panel off. Okay, so after you have all that done, removing the door panel, and this was not loosened prior, it really does lift up that easy. You can push this piece through. Make sure you clear the locking mechanism without bending or damaging it, like so. And then once we get to this position, you can actually, and I'm gonna do this one-handed. Okay, I'm holding it with my knee, the weight of it. My hand is just kind of bracing it. Take my good hand, reach in, hopefully you can see this. And just pop, press up. So what I did is I just reached in and press up and this will pop out. I better get some thumbs up for doing this video. <laughs> then you can remove that trim. Usually the chrome doesn't come with it, but whatever. It all comes off. And then if you kind of hang it back on the door, loosely, carefully, it will give you, hopefully you can see this, it will give you the excess needed to get at this plug underneath. Just disconnect the plug is all you have to do. Another thing I find makes it easier is this trim plastic piece. If you reach underneath and press up, you can pull that out and it makes it easier. We'll put that up and hang it temporarily. Just pop it in after. So yeah, removing the rubber grommet just makes it a little easier to temporarily hang the door on here. It's supporting itself now. So even with my bad hand, I can hold this and show you and reach in the plug itself. It's just one of those press tabs. You press and disconnect. Then your door switch panel is removed. And once you take the door panel off again, there will be one more little wire to unhook. It's another little squeeze and, and that's it. I'm even going to get some light and show you. But it's actually attached to the door so that wire will come free. And it's probably looking more complicated because of my injury than it actually is. It's really simple guys. There you go. Door panel can now be removed. There you go. I apologize for the poor lighting. It is minus 25 degrees Celsius outside 
and I'm not going out there to get daylight. It's really simple. Now we get into the, the meat and potatoes of this transformation. Okay, so there are the one, two, three nuts that hold on the mirror. Follow down the electrical connection. So we trace it down right about here. You just have to pull it out of the hole. There you go. There will be one more of those right where the white tape is. That one. Well, this iPhone actually is going to work out better with the flash in it. it. Helps me do lighting at the same time, makes it better for you. Okay, so you follow your power connection down, you'll remove that one clip, keep following it. Remove this other clip from that hole. Keep following and you'll come down to your two final connections. And it's just a matter of pressing in, pressing in. There you go. One, two. And that is your factory mirror. So next we're gonna remove these one, two, three nuts. Pull this through the grommet and that's it, it's so simple. Mirror off, and then we're gonna do some rib nuts in these holes. There's one here, so not in these ones. There are extras, there's gonna be one, two, and if I move this, there's the third one. So there's gonna be three of those to put rib nuts in. And then basically, let me figure this out again. Uh, yeah, like that. Once we have rib nuts in those holes, this bracket will go on like so, and will be screwed on. And then that still leaves access to those, these two holes. That's what we're gonna put the tow mirror and this one is not affected at all. Okay, so let's get the mirror off. Okay, next step is remove these three nuts. It's a, well for me, it's a 10 millimeter. There we go. 10 millimeter to remove these three. And I'm just gonna pull that through. one little plastic or metal clip in there that holds it on. It's a snap clip. Video or it never happened. One hand. So that little snapping noise you heard is just this retaining clip. No damage, there's nothing to be concerned about. I know sometimes when you hear noises like that on video, you probably think I did something wrong, but just one, two, three, I keep saying it. This little guy was the one that was sticking a bit. So I pull down the mirror, it just pops out. Everything is good. And you're left with something like this. I'm gonna give it a little cleanup. Okay, next I'm gonna install these rib nuts. You can kind of see they have flat sides and they correspond with the hole, obviously, like so. And like I said, I will link a description to a video below on rib nuts and how they work, because it's just gonna eat up too much time to explain it. I'm sure most of you guys understand it. Basically, you use a tool, and the tool will suck the metal and the threads in the back towards the front, and basically crush this, or sandwich the sheet metal in between. That's how it works. The threads on these are only in the first portion. This portion here is just soft metal. So it'll collapse and basically create another lip on the other side. And therefore it's almost like it's, you know, it's permanent. It's like it's welded for argument's sake. And anchored strongly and securely. And that's what we're gonna attach the brackets to. Now, this is the rib nut tool that I'm kind of using. So 
So I'm just gonna plunk that in here. Plunk that in like so. And then I'll use my tools to tighten it and make it permanent. And you can see, very strong bond. So that's how RivNet works, in a nutshell. So, three RivNuts are now installed. Here is the tow mirror bracket. Like I stated many times, part number in the description below. And that goes like so. You can see everything lines up. Now I'm going to go ahead and just install those three screws with a bit of thread locker. And there it is, bracket installed. Only one thing left to do. One other thing I wanted to quickly mention is to make sure the tow mirror goes over top of this rubber. This rubber is on there from the factory and if you look at your current mirrors you'll see your mirrors on top of this. Okay, I won't lie, it was a bit of a struggle one-handed, but yeah, they're bolted on. Now, they even come with the little plastic clip to reinsert back in the hole. Keep the wires tidy. Anyway, I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and reinsert those and then plug and play. Put these two right back plug and play you gotta love it hey <laughs> and then we'll give everything a test and put it all back together in the reverse order and I think you got the, the gist of it I'm gonna go have a beer and rest my arm and tidy up okay it's the next day out for breakfast and I thought I'd do the final thoughts on this video first of all Let's check them out. Here is the power folding button on my truck. As you can see, they close and open no problem in minus 18 degrees Celsius temperatures. Speaking of temperatures, I, uh, I just took a screenshot of my phone's weather and it is indeed minus 18. So that proves that the temperature sensor in this mirror, that's where it's located, is working properly. So that's good. They're folding and unfolding, no problem. Uh, haven't had a chance to test the heated aspect of them yet, but when I pull into my underground here now shortly, I'll either do another video or take some pictures and put them up on the screen. We'll see if that's working, if it's blotchy, if it's a good coverage or whatever. And what else can I tell you about them? They do not have the auto dimming feature that the factory mirrors have. Now I knew that going into it, I have tinted side mirrors, so that's not really an issue for me. Don't really care. In fact, it's probably a good thing. And I think, like on the factory trucks, there's there's some kind of memory option for these mirrors that these do not have. So be aware of that. Also, other than that, no complaints. Uh, when you're looking at a vehicle far away in the big mirror, things uh, the vehicle can look a little distorted, a little warped. I've noticed that on factory trucks as well though, so I don't know if that's really a complaint, but A1 Auto, if you're listening, it's definitely room for improvement. You know, the glass could be improved slightly, I think. A minor complaint though. Uh, overall, I really like them. Like, they feel sturdy, they feel strong, the motor sounds good. I like everything about them, especially for the price. To Canada, including shipping, duties, all the, uh, the um, currency conversion, all that stuff. These were still about a third of the price as I could get the, the OEM Mopar factory ones. So bang for the buck, I think they're excellent. I'll do like a three month, six month, 12 month review on them. Unless I have any problems, I'll update sooner. But yeah, I'm happy with them. And for, the, for those of you who don't, um, necessarily go on the forums online like Cummins forum, Ram forum. 
you probably don't know the reviews on them but I'll let you know what I've researched it seems like genuinely most people are very happy that buy these you know like 9 out of 10 or uh, 95 out of 100 we'll say are very happy with them the few complaints I've seen have been pretty minor I know initially when they came out there was some complaints of weak motors the mirrors wouldn't fold all the way but that has been rectified they have um, upgraded their motors in these mirrors and if anything watch they actually crush my vent visor there slightly so they fold all the way you can hear them tap so yeah no problems they actually seem to fold out at the, at the exact same speed unlike the factory ones it seems like the factory ones this one always opened faster than that one and for those of you that have power folding mirrors I'm, I'm sure you'll know what I'm talking about but yeah other than that that's it guys hopefully you, you guys have got something out of it I know it's a very basic install so most people you know I did it with one arm talking about it but I'm sure most guys could probably do it with their eyes closed it's that easy don't be afraid to take on this one hopefully like uh, people might not know how to get off the door panel or different things that I've shown in the video so I just hope somebody got something out of it I'm sure they will for all you experts I just hope you like the look of it and yeah we'll see you on the next one thanks very much for watching uh -huh.